Hello, this is Torin, and I'm going to read this article from entomologytoday.org. Tick bites tick, a rare case of hard tick hyperparasitism. This is from, oh God, 16 hours ago. This is uh, February 28th, 2018. Sometimes parasites get a little taste of their own medicine. A tick specimen submitted to the Alaska Department of Fish and Game offered a surprising look at hyperparasitic behavior among the species Ixides and Gustus. After examination under a scanning electron microscope, researchers shared their findings in a new report in the Journal of Medical Entomology. The image shows the hyperparasitism caught in the act, a large engorged female I. angustus tick, which had been removed from a squirrel, shown with its own hitchhiker, a male I. angustus tick, attached to its underside in typical feeding mode, with his palps splayed outside of her exoskeleton and his feeding apparatus, that is the hypostome and the chelicerae, I am absolutely pronouncing those perfectly correctly, uh, inserted. Lance A. Durden, uh, uh, rel brother, brother, cousin of Tyler Durden, Lance A. Durden, Ph.D., professor at Georgia Southern University and lead author on the report, says he had never seen such a case of hyperparasitism in hard ticks. That's the Ixodidae family. Though it is more common in soft ticks, the Argacidae family. Uh, engorged soft ticks can be besieged by unfed individuals who opportunistically drive their mouth parts into the fed individual to steal part of the blood meal, he says. But that's not all that is notable about the specimen. Also visible in the image is another scar, lower left of center, that Durden and colleagues say was likely caused by another male tick feeding on the female in the same way. And, yes, there's more, when the specimen was originally submitted, there was another male attached mating with the female. It fell off in the course of preparing the specimen for SEM imaging. That's, as you remember, scanning electron microscope. Now, this species of tick is a nidiculous. Nidiculous. It's totally nidiculous. It is nidic. Uh, nidiculous, that means nest-dwelling. It is a nest-dwelling species, meaning it can progress through its entire life cycle with, within the nest or burrow of its host, for example, a mouse or a vole. And males are rarely found on hosts. It has been presumed that mating typically occurs in the nest, but nine males of I. angustus have been collected on hosts in the course of the Alaska Department of Fish and Game's tick survey. Yes, there is a tick survey. Won't you take it? Find out if you're a tick or not. How tickish are you? Are you ticklish? Are you tickish? These nine males that have been collected on hosts in the course of the survey since 2010 and nearly all had been found mating with females. Their findings suggest mating outside the nest and hyperparasitism in I. angustus may both be more common than previously thought. Uh, male ticks that were infected with a pathogen or a parasite, such as Lyme disease, spirochetes, or Babesia protozoans, uh, previously during their life cycle by feeding on an infected host, could transmit these pathogens to female ticks during hyperparasitism. Female ticks could then transfer these pathogens or parasites uh, to their progeny by transovarial transmission, Durden says. Although we don't know yet if pathogen or parasite transmission occurs between the angustus ticks by these mechanisms, if it does occur, this could have epidemiological significance by amplifying the number of infected ticks. So, if you want to read more, look for hyperparasitism and non nidiculous mating by male oxides augustus ticks in the journal of medical entomology and thank you for listening and uh, my name is torn atkinson and you should find me on patreon and give me a dollar give me a dollar come on give me a dollar